So our next presentation is going to be by ALS Canada. Our presenters are Lisa Dropo and Sarah McGuire. Lisa Dropa joined ALS Canada as Vice President of Client Services in November of 2015, where she, was, where she is responsible for client services in Ontario, including a team of regional managers and an equipment program supporting approximately 680 people living with ALS. She is passionate about the quality of care people receive and optimizing their healthcare experience. She has worked in the healthcare sector for over 20 years, holding leadership roles in the Ontario Ministry of Health and Long-Term Care, Ontario Association of Community Care Access Centres, and CCAC, and hospitals in Canada and the UK. She is both a strategic and operational leader who enjoys building relationships and co collaborating with staff and stakeholders. Sarah McGuire will be presenting with Lisa. She is the ALS Canada Regional Manager for Central Ontario and North Simcoe Muskoka and has worked with ALS patients and their families for nearly eight years. Sarah has worked with chari charitable organizations for 20 years, including health charities for the last 11 years. Her clients speak extremely highly of her, and it's been a pleasure to have her up north to advocate for our mutual clients in the community at the local level. Please welcome them up. I'm Lisa, this is Sarah. <laughs> Thank you so much for having us and I'd like to uh, start by thanking uh, Margo and Peter for your inspiring words. We have the privilege of working with people like you each and every day and I'm uh, so grateful that you're able to share your experience which makes what we're all here to do uh, very real. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about ALS Canada and um, we have a number of things that we're going to review and actually builds really well on the day how you put us on the agenda. So we're going to talk about what we do. I'd like to go ahead and disagree with that. <laughs> I'd like to formally complain about the order of the agenda because Margo, you, Taz, and Peter are really tough acts to follow. And now I have all this emotion, so I'm just saying. <laughs> we'll support each other, that's why. So we're going to talk a little bit about what we do. Uh, Sarah's going to talk about the role of a regional manager. Then I'll come back and talk about our equipment program, and uh, hopefully we'll have a chance for questions. Um, so ALS Canada is an interesting organization by our name because we both have, we have national and we have provincial responsibilities. So our national responsibilities are research and advocacy and provincially we are responsible for support and services and supporting people like Margo and Peter in the community. We work with other provincial associations across the, uh, the country and so they are responsible then for client services, for example, in British Columbia, Alberta and so on. And so we work in a model that we have as a partnership but we are uh, ALS Canada is not specifically responsible for supporting people across the country uh, you might be interested to know that our funding is entirely from donations so we don't get a single dollar from government for the services that we provide I think people are surprised by that and so I'm pleased to share with you the things that we provide but it's thanks to our donors and uh, Marco recognized the walk for example it's through events and activities like that that we're able to provide the services that we do so at a high level then here in Ontario, uh, the services and programs that we're providing include our equipment program, which I'll talk a little bit more about, uh, support for clients and caregivers, we run support groups, and as, as Sarah will talk about a number of these things. We provide referral and advocacy to different services, education and services, and uh, we provide a little bit of bereavement support. And in fact, in a survey that we did last year, we learned that it was an area that families wanted more support, and so we're continuing to explore how we can do that. From a research perspective, uh, we have a granting and award program uh, that's fairly substantial and every year we're awarding grants that create opportunities for Canadian research across the country. Uh, we're also involved in something called Project Mind, which is an international project that's looking at uh, understanding the more about the genetics of the disease. We have an annual scientific conference and we provide some webinars. And just briefly, at an advocacy level, we have a number of things we do federally. So for example, a number of years ago, the Compassionate Care Benefits was an area of focus. And provincially, we also have uh, a number of advocacy priorities, including the one that um, Anu mentioned earlier, the whole issue of the support for respiratory care and long-term uh, care and hospice. So with that, I'm gonna hand it over to uh, Sarah, and then I'll come back and talk about the equipment program. Thank you, Lisa. So these are some of the highlights from the work that we've done in 2016. 
1,100 clients and their families received support from ALS Canada. Um, we actively served 850 to 900 people living with ALS at any one time. There are 11 regional managers who work in the community, I'm one of them. And we've conducted 1,000 one-on-one -on -one visits uh, with clients and their families. We held 175 support groups and delivered 100 educational sessions. So as regional managers, what is it that we do? Well, when I go into a home, uh, it's a pretty broad spectrum role. So really the main message is to let people know that they're not alone and we're here to help. That seems pretty vague, but uh, basically there's a number of different ways that we can get involved with our clients and our families. Generally speaking, we're there to provide information, support and resources. Um, at our initial visit, we have a, a manual for ALS. Actually, it's in the process of being redesigned and updated, but that's one of the things that we provide at the very beginning. And uh, just to clarify, typically we're involved from the point of diagnosis to death and, and beyond, depending on the, the bereavement needs as well. So uh, we, we build very thorough relationships in most cases with our, with our families and our clients that we work with. Um, to be clear though, we, we don't have to do home visits if a client would rather not have them. So we allow the client to sort of determine the nature of the relationship with us. So we do do home visits. Um, my office is my car and my colleagues are pretty much the same. We only have one central office. The, the rest of the time, the rest of the province, we go to our clients. Um, we don't insist that there are regional offices where clients have to come to us because that wouldn't make any sense. Um, so we also facilitate support groups throughout our regions. We advocate to ensure that our clients have the care that they need. Um, and we liaise with other community agencies to make that happen. And I know in my position, um, that role changed a lot in the eight years that I've been doing this. Um, prior to uh, a couple of changes that took place in my region that I'll explain in a minute, my role was more advocacy than partnership. Now there's a, a much greater understanding of the needs of the ALS community um, with the community agencies that we work with. So it's much more about partnership than it is sort of arguing the case for, for the clients, which is a, is a better place to be for everybody, really. We also do education sessions in a number of different sort of environments, whether it's long-term care homes or whether it's um, the workplace sometimes or uh, with service agencies. There's a number of different places that require education about ALS and that's one of the things that we do. And uh, one of the other roles that we have as regional managers that a lot of people don't know is we wear the hat of a fundraiser as well. So um, June is our ALS Awareness Month. So uh, during that time, we're sort of preparing walks. And this actually can happen throughout the year as well. But because we don't uh, have any government funding for our support services, um, we do rely on donations. So that's one of the things that we do as well as um, client support. So I'll give you um, sort of a, an example of some of the work that I personally did with a client, just to give you an idea of how we can be involved. Unfortunately, my slides are a little bit region specific. That's, that is what happens when you're sort of thrown into the spotlight as a presenter, you get to be biased. But um, just to let you know, this is the kind of stuff that is happening across the province with my colleagues as well. So in this particular case, this was a gentleman, um, fairly young, he, he was in his 40s when he was diagnosed. Two young children, he lived in an inaccessible environment. Um, he worked in an inaccessible environment. Uh, the, the, the label of denial was his own. He self-described as being in denial. That's not a label that I gave him. He did not want to look ahead to the future very much, sort of didn't want to have to restrict how he did things on a daily basis. I think all of that's very understandable, but um, that was one of his challenges. So he would find that he, put, he would put himself in situations where he was at risk because he wasn't sort of really accepting his limitations. Um, the family was already low income before he had to start thinking about giving up work. So that was another challenge. Um, and of course, because of that, his goal at that time was to continue to work for as long as possible. So um, to try and sort of help him understand where he was at and understand some of the challenges and to be there just as an emotional support, I conducted regular home visits with him, which he welcomed at the time. It allowed us to sort of plant the seed of some things that might be needed down the road, but because he knew I'd be coming back next month, he didn't have to dwell on it too much on his own. His own. So he had my support as well. 
Um, and his, his uh, spouse actually found that very helpful as well because she was on a slightly different page. So I was able to, um, let's see, let's say tag team a little bit with some of the things that she was trying to uh, express as well. Um, I was able to advocate to the care coordinator at the time to extend the OT visits. At that time, there wasn't a huge amount of understanding as to the progression of ALS. So after the initial falls prevention basic assessment, the OT visits had uh, been cut off and uh, we had to fight a little bit to get those reinstated. It's very different in the region now though. Um, I was able to go with the OT to uh, their new residence that they would be moving into once their home became completely inaccessible. And I was very lucky to be able to go there ahead of time before the client moved in to assess some of the needs that um, he would have so that everything would be in place for the day that he actually moved in, which solved a lot of issues, thank goodness. Um, I was also able to uh, work with his employer to provide two education sessions to senior management for two reasons. The first reason was to sort of create an environment of sensitivity and support so people would understand what it was that he was dealing with. Um, and secondly, it was also to encourage the employer to look at the accessibility issues because he wanted to work for as long as possible, but it wasn't safe. So that helped to educate the employer. And then at that time, we were able to refer to an OT. We're very lucky, actually, we have this connection. Um, the OT's specialty is looking at accessibility in the workplace. She also happens to have both professional and personal experience of ALS. So um, a great resource to have. So she then worked with the employer to make sure that the workplace was safe so that the client could continue to work for as long as possible. The other thing that we were able to do was offer to work with the schools so that his children would be extra supported in the, in the school environment as well. We've had a lot of success with that in the past. One of the uh, other clients that I worked with, I worked closely with the uh, schools involved and they were able to change a number of things to support the family. They changed the bus routes, they gave uh, priority to any volunteer involvement while dad was still able to do things. They changed, uh, they made sure that the kids were able to uh, access all extracurricular um, in, uh, activities to, at no cost as well, and their lunch program at no cost and change all the communication instead of the umpteen forms that you get home from school. They changed it all to email to make it more easy to communicate. So um, the schools actually can be really, really supportive. So those are some of the ways that we can get involved as regional managers. Um, there's lots of other examples I could probably use as well, but that gives you sort of a little bit of a window into it. So there's other things that we do as well as working directly with clients. We also work with community partners. So that can be the long-term care homes, the LIN, previously CCAC, um, health and community agencies to promote ALS awareness and support clients through those activities. One of the things that's very important to note, especially when uh, some of the questions came up earlier about the barriers with long-term care homes and uh, the BiPAP machine, I'm, I'd like to, I don't know if Dr. Tandon's in here right now. Okay, oh, right in front of me. Um, I can tell you firsthand that Dr. Tandon is actually actively involved with us and with some of the LINs involved to try and advocate to the Ministry of Health to fix some of those issues. So this isn't something we're just observing. This is something that we're actively involved in trying to fix as well. Actually, on that note, I'd just like to take a moment to thank everybody at the ALS Clinic and the ATC clinic and the AAC clinic, I know there's sort of an overlap, but um, it's very clear that our, our clients are not just a number to you. It's very clear to them, it's very clear to us. You are very passionately involved and you're very compassionate and I just wanna thank you for that. Um, so here are some other... <laughs> and I'd also like to thank everybody else for being here because one of the greatest um, supports you can offer a family living with ALS is to have a clue about ALS because it's very unnerving for the clients that we work with when they have professionals coming in who have never worked with someone with ALS before. So just the fact that you're educating yourselves by coming here is huge. Thank you. So again, I'm going to brag a little bit about some of the work in my region. It's not down to me. I've been involved, I, I can tag along to those coattails, but it's not all down to me. 
The, uh, we've got some people from Central Lynn here, some of the care coordinators. I see you at the back. You're fabulous. Um, there was some work done uh, with the Central Lynn a few years ago. It made a huge difference in the, uh, how care was delivered to the ALS community. They have a dedicated caseload that works specifically with the ALS community. It changed the entire nature of how clients accessed services. It made everything run more smoothly. The partnerships were increased. The level of care was improved. And uh, that was something that we were able to, to work directly with the Lynn on, or previously CCAC. Something similar has also taken place in the North Simcoe Muskoka Lynn as well. They just uh, designed a whole new pathway for, to improve services to the ALS community, which they launched in February. And um, that's having a similar effect. So um, these are some of the other things that regional managers can be involved in. We work to provide education to the direct funding program through CILT. Um, and they similarly have provided education to us about their program. So we have a good working relationship with them. We can help with those applications too. And the other things that we do, um, are some of the regional managers are very, very involved with the ALS clinics in their region. Sarah Reedman is a wonderful example. <laughs> Love you, Sarah. Um, and uh, it's made a huge difference. Again, it's uh, filling in a, a gap between um, the clients and access to care and the ALS society. So we're very lucky that uh, we have Sarah there. So this is the area that we cover. I think we cover pretty much the whole province, don't we? Yeah, except for Windsor. And uh, so not all of the regional managers are here today, but I will just give you everybody's names and then the ones that are here, I insist that you stand up. I'm not going to be up here alone. Okay, you don't have to come over, but you do have to stand up. Sorry, I keep whacking the microphone there. Okay, so we've got Charlene, who's not here today. We do have Joanna. Where are you, Joanne? There we are. Um, we have uh, Melissa. We have Laurie, Sarah. Um, we have Kim, Bonnie, Leanne, and Nicole. Did I miss anyone? Did you all just stand up and then disappear again? <laughs> they might seem uh, shy, but they're not. Don't be full, full. Yeah, it was a wave. Um, so I think, am I back to you? Okay, yes. thank you very much. So I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about our equipment program. And thank you, Sarah. Um, so we have uh, three individuals supporting our equipment program. And as Sarah said, at any one time, we have about 850 to 900 people uh, that we're supporting. And over 600 of them are using our equipment program. And Peter made reference to, her, to that as well. Last year, over 3,500 requests from that program. And we are seeing an increase on an ongoing basis. And most of the equipment that we have that we're giving to people, we get through donations. And so we've been valuing those. We give tax receipts uh, for those donations. Last year, we took in $250,000 worth of equipment. So we have three programs, and Karen did a good job of uh, outlining some of the things we have, but just to describe the programs in a little bit more detail. We have a loan program, a funding assistance program, and a flexible funding program. So the loan program is a program that's available to anyone. It offers a wide range of equipment, and I've got uh, the summary list on the next slide. And as Karen mentioned, there's a, a website as well that we have a catalog on. Anybody who's registered with us can have access to this program. And as I mentioned, it's donated. We target a delivery date uh, time of 10 business days. Some are faster, some are a little bit slower. And again, we're covering the whole province, so that can be uh, challenging at times. Because of the nature of our program and the costs associated with us shipping things around, we, our preference is that uh, organizations or people who are promoting equipment for somebody first test it through a LIN equipment program. We're not a testing program. We're the one who are going to be able to provide for the long term. And you can imagine every time we have to get uh, a bed from Ottawa to Toronto, the costs associated with that. So we need to be taking things to people and keeping them there as opposed to trying to have two or three different versions of the testing. This is the list of what we provide, and uh, Karen made reference to a number of these things. It's a pretty comprehensive list, and uh, we, we have most of these things. Sometimes we're uh, running short, and we do purchase items from time to time. Uh, we just had a very generous donation last week, and we were able to buy a number of items that we'd had people waiting for a number of weeks for. So that's uh, the process that we go through in order to keep uh, improving the quality of the equipment that we have. 
Our financial assistance program is one where we help people with a little bit of extra funding for certain things. And so these are leased or rental programs. So for example, the assistive devices programs around wheelchairs, the communication devices, uh, as was mentioned earlier by Karen, those programs cover 75% of the cost and the client is left with a remaining 25%. So we have a sliding income scale, which we updated this year. It hadn't been updated in five years. And depending on the family income, we then are able to potentially provide people with some assistance uh, for those items. Um, we're the last funder, if you will. So if somebody has private insurance, they go there first, but wherever we can help. And sometimes we're funding up to 100% of that remaining 25%. And it's not unusual for me to be authorizing four or $5,000 towards a very sophisticated uh, wheelchair on behalf of a client or family. We also have the stair glide that Karen mentioned this morning that fits into the same piece because of the unique nature of each home. Those are rented and again, depending on the family income, we might help with those. So this year we introduced a new program around small bathroom equipment. We were sending $50 commodes to people and paying the same amount to deliver them and so on. And also we were increasingly concerned about just disinfection and sterilization standards. So we uh, selected some of the smaller bathroom items, decided that we would purchase them for people. They don't come back to us. We don't repair them. And we've essentially created an account for each of our clients where they can access these devices uh, in a different way. And so far it seems to be really working. Uh, very well. So just to give you a sense of the magnitude of this program, we work with about 30 partners across the province. We have a number, of, we have six key vendors who actually store equipment for us and help us ship it around so we can get it to people. But then we have all these other partners who help us deliver, they clean, they repair, they pick up our donations. And without this network of partners, there's absolutely no way that we could run uh, this program. So uh, just a note as well about the donations. Uh, those, many of you may be in situations where people have equipment they want to be donating. We would gladly accept it. We take items that are less than five years old. There are a number of items that we don't take, um, but uh, we're certainly taking every day we're receiving donations and our partners across the province uh, assess those, we issue the tax receipts. And so it's a win-win for everybody in this process. So I just, uh, some of you may be interested in more about our equipment program. This summer, because we introduced a lot of changes, we actually held a, a webinar a couple times and tried to get it widespread to therapists and others in the system. If you have an interest in knowing more details about our equipment program, I'm sitting in the middle and just give me your card and I'll make sure I send you the more detailed presentation. We want people to understand our services and programs so that we can get things to people that uh, we really want. So I think, uh, do we have time, Daniel, to take a couple questions? Okay, any questions for us? We're here, and the uh, whole team's, almost the whole team's here, so if, uh, we're happy to answer any of your questions uh, later in the day if you want. Thank you.